In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Carl Jung, the Swiss psychiatrist and psychoanalyst, whom many of you have likely heard of, believe that we produce in art those things that the soul needs to see itself and to transform itself. So let's consider that just a moment. He was saying that in art we produce things are revealed that the soul needs to be able to see in order to see itself and to be transformed. Today, in the church, we recall the restoration of icons, the Sunday of Orthodoxy. It's hard to imagine going into an Orthodox church and not seeing icons because they are so much all about us. But there was a time in the church's history when there was a great debate about icons and they were banned at some times. And they were banned because it was an understanding among those who sought to have them removed, the iconoclast, that it was impossible to reveal the invisible God. That God could simply not be depicted in an image. The ones that were not won out in all of this ultimately were the iconophiles, the ones who said that Jesus Christ is both human and divine. So while the iconoclast said divinity cannot be expressed in an image, because Jesus Christ was the integration and the presentation of the unity of the human and the divine. And he could be seen that therefore it was proper to have images because it revealed this unity of heaven and earth. As Carl Jung said, we produce these images because they help us to see what is in the soul and what the soul needs for its own transformation. Oftentimes, we can get so heavily bogged down, we might say, in our focus on our weakness and on our sinfulness. And particularly this can happen to us during a Lenten season where all that we may see are our failings, our weakness, our sinfulness. But when we come before an icon of Jesus Christ, an icon of the Mother of God, an icon of the Holy Ones, the Saints, we look at the images and realize that they are windows into heaven, as icons have often been described. We don't have statues because statues you can just walk around, but an icon you look at, you see through, you see into a deeper dimension. Let us take the icon of Jesus Christ. We look and we see the unity of the human and the divine 
in him. And as we look, it is our eyes that are seeing. We are seeing through this image into the deeper dimensions of the unity of heaven and earth. And we're seeing that as a perception within ourselves. So when we can see that, we can realize that it's not just something out there we're looking at, but in fact that is an illumination that's happening within our own soul. We are seeing the unity of heaven and earth, which is what we are all to be about, to live with this realization of the union of heaven and earth within us. We have this kind of balancing act that we have to work with because we realize that, yes, we mess up oftentimes and we've made mistakes and we say so often that we're unworthy. And yes, we are unworthy. But at the same time, at the very same time, we're worthy. Our Lord has brought us here. He has counted us worthy to receive his very presence in the sacrament of the altar and in all the sacraments of the church. So we have to carry that sort of fine balance, our unworthiness, but not drowned in it, and our worthiness, but not become filled with pride in that. But to carry both of these things within us and to see in us the transformation and the elevation that is possible unto holiness. In the gospel today, it started off with our Lord calling disciples, follow me. So at several points in the gospel, we hear him saying this, follow me. But for us, it's not following him from Carroll Stream to St. Charles. It's not a geographical distance we're following. We're following him in terms of understanding and embracing within ourselves, in the very depths of our soul, what he was revealing to us, which is the kingdom of heaven that was right in our midst as he walked the earth and is right in our midst now in all the sacramental life of the church and really in all of creation. So we have this great blessing of icons that allow us to see into this deeper dimension of the union of heaven and earth and that allow that realization within ourselves. For some reason, it seems as if we as human beings oftentimes tend to focus on that which comprises our failing, that which comprises the negative things in us, and fail to take joy in those things that are of a higher level, the heavenly in us. So it's not something we get carried away with. It's something that we balance and realize that it is in that movement, in that movement of seeing our humanity filled with the grace of divinity that we become as those whom we see all about us. We become saintly people. We become holy people. And when we do that, we have a spiritual fragrance about us. 
a spiritual radiance and a lightness that carries us beyond any of the difficulties that we may face in life and that carries us even beyond death and further into eternity. The blessing of the Lord be upon you through His grace and love for mankind, always, now, and ever, and to the